We met Todd back in August when his supergroup Took were fe featured in two episodes on our channel around their in-store appearances in Regina and Moose Jaw. The third right. release of their second album, Never Enough, Todd is the lead singer of Original Sin, Age of Electric, and plays bass, bass, <laughs> bass, bass is a fish, bass is a guitar, and Slash <laughs> featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. Did we miss any of your groups? Um, probably, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Those are the well-known ones. Those are the ones that matter, I, I guess. I yes. Don't know he joins us from his home in Las Vegas. That's right. From the house. And I'm touching my face. Stop touching your face, Todd. Yeah, I do it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I will warn you, Tom might randomly appear, like, cut cut me off. Did you comb your hair for this? <laughs> I'm wearing a too, which only makes sense when you're in a band called Two. Is social isolation what it was like when you, Gene, your dad, would ground you? When he would ground me? Uh, well, we didn't have Netflix back then. So, <laughs> no, it's, it's much better now. Yeah, the other day we were talking about Netflix, and you said that it might be the comeback for Bert books because you can only stream so much Netflix. Absolutely. I'm kind of at that point now. Well, today they just kind of put out Ozark Season 3. So now I'm kind of, I don't work for Netflix, so I don't need to be advertising them. But I, I literally am getting to a point where I've watched everything I need to watch. And I should be reading my stack of books that I have uh, always got collected. Well, but I uh, still, I still find something to watch. What is Sin City like these days because of COVID-19? You know what's funny is we drove, my wife and I drove down the Las Vegas Strip yesterday which I thought would be a lot more exciting and cool, but it was actually kind of just weird because there's like nobody on the strip where there's usually like millions of people and you get stopped because there's so much pedestrian traffic and so many cars. It's just strange to be driving around and there's nobody around. I really haven't left my neighborhood if, uh, you know, I mostly stay in the house, but once in a while we'll go for a walk around my neighborhood, but uh, it was good to go down the Las Vegas Strip. It's very interesting because it's totally shut down. <laughs> it's very weird. It's kind of like that for me because I, I well, if, once I take a walk, I was like, realize that there's too many people at certain places. Like, I guess I know. the other day yeah. on Monday, I saw like 50 people walking and they were like about one meter apart. Not that, not even. How long? No, I know. It's uh, there's a park by my in our in our neighborhood, and all the kids were getting together to play basketball. So it looked like they were not practicing social distancing. But now they've got like like uh, the yellow tape around the entire thing where you're not allowed to enter the park. So I guess that's been rendered shut. So yeah, going outside is, is weird too because we're supposed to be staying away from people, but then you're outside and suddenly there's people. But in my neighbor, in my corner of town out here on the edge of the desert it's you know we 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 don't run into too many people so fans can post questions that we will ask and how long have you been off stage off stage um it was uh, a week saturday so this past oh. saturday oh so almost two weeks tomorrow mm. will be two weeks which is the longest I've been off stage in a long time. Yeah. It's very interesting. It's been about two weeks for us for school. And I'm kind of like, okay, I'm trying to settle <laughs> in. I read 16 I books it, this it month. Always seems like, it always seems like staying home from school would be really fun, but it never is. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, I lived in a small town, not far from you guys. And I didn't skip school because then, where there was no mall to go to or anything fun like that. And all my friends were at school, so I just stayed home or stayed at school. So unless I was really sick, you know, then there would be no reason to, like, not go to school. So being out of school eventually might get kind of old for you guys. You'll probably eventually be like, okay, let's go hang out with our friends. Yeah. A fan from Italy asked if you're doing okay. Yeah, doing great. I'm actually, for the first week, I was really enjoying the break because I never take breaks. And I have to be forced to take a break 
Uh, and this time I was kind of like, well, there's nothing I can do. There's nowhere I can go. So there's nothing to feel guilty about taking a break for. So I just kind of enjoyed chilling at the house and catching up on shows and playing guitar and, you know, stuff like that. Spending time with the family. Are you, driving, you, are you driving your wife crazy yet? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that poor thing. I think I think every once in a while, you know, the, a, a, you know, wife des- deserves a break from crazy husbands. So, and yeah, I'm. Uh, wives all over the world are probably going like. I know. Yeah, exactly. So when I'm away, she has all kinds of uh, projects she can get up to, and now that I'm hovering around the house, I'm driving her crazy. But we're having a blast, actually. We're having a lot of fun. You know. We'll, She's working in the garden and stuff, and I'm watching her work in the garden because I don't know what any of that is. <laughs> yeah, kind of me watching my mom doing work downstairs, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, you're like, "Wow, she's awfully busy when we're when you know when we're not around." I didn't realize she got that much stuff. But there yeah, you go. Like, same thing with my dad lately. I've been like hovering <laughs> over him, and I was like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> I know. Well, that's what happens. See, people are so accustomed to doing something for eight hours a day that being stuck at home is weird. Yeah. How are your animals doing? I don't have any animals, actually. Oh. No. I don't have any pets. It's just I travel too much to have it. pets. Oh, right. I remember asking that question, and they, I forget which two of you, Brent and it. Corey. I think Corey and Brent both have uh, dogs. Dogs. Brent yes. has a whole whole, tr- a whole like wolf pack of dogs, wow. and Corey has a couple, and I think I think Shane might have a cat. I can't remember how that. Oh was. yeah, I think Shane did have a cat. Yeah. yeah. Do you think I... Do you think there'll be more gardens? <laughs> you mean people like m- more people doing gardening now because they're bored? Yeah. I, I imagine. Yeah. Who knows? I I it's it, my, my my thumb hasn't turned green yet. It hasn't really grabbed me yet, but uh, yeah. I get it. You know, it's just not, uh, it's not for me. But the wife's out there right now. Wow. Yeah, it's plus five today. Yeah. Is it? We yeah. Got, it's, it's, yeah, I suppose for you guys. It's, it's getting, it's getting warm here. It's not quite summer, but it's, it's, you know, I still wear It's this. something. It's something. Yeah. At least, at it's least something. we have good weather. Exactly. Talking about good weather. Good weather inside. Talking about Brent, it's yeah. actually his birthday today. It's Brent's birthday, and we can't do anything for his birthday because we're all trapped inside. I have an idea. We surprise, we surprise him with an online birthday party. A live that supports okay. his birthday. How can we do that? I don't know. We just ask, uh, so we ask him to come with us today, and then, yeah, we can invite him. Yeah. Can, can you do that? Can you find him? Two people at once. Oh, Two people at once. I don't know where he is. Yeah. Probably. Maybe he's face down in a birthday cake. <laughs> Good point. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully, Hopefully he's face down in a birthday I, cake. Who knows if he's even awake yet? He's he's a rock and roll guy. He might be asleep. Yeah, I, I, woke, I was asleep till 8, 20, 8, 17 today. I woke up at 6 o'clock. That's you, like very rock and roll. Brent says your love of reading has inspired him to start reading. Did you buy him a book for his birthday? Not this year, but I have bought him books in the past. I Hmm. bought him uh, a Phil Collins book last year, like Phil Collins from Genesis and Phil Collins, these solo artists. He put out a book a couple years ago. I bought him uh, a Starbucks uh, book, which is weird because he's addicted to coffee. <laughs> and, and I have Starbucks uh, right here. I bought him a few books, but this year I, I we got him some. Oh my god, you should be drinking Starbucks already. It's only oh, it's, it's, no, it's just hot chocolate, peppermint hot chocolate. Oh, there you go, perfect. I had hot chocolate last night. I'm spoiled rotten. Same here. You recently? Oh, so. You recently had a great idea for a new Star Trek series. 
any Twitter that got some heavyweight endorsements, what happened? Oh God, I, 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 I'm obsessed with Star Trek, as most of my friends know. And they just did the, the season finale of Star Trek Picard yesterday. So I tweeted the thing about, you guys don't even know what I'm talking about. This is total insanity. <laughs> but yeah. I said, I know now they have to make a series about, they have to make a series about Jonathan Frakes' character, Commander Riker. And it was liked by Brett Spiner, who plays Data and Jonathan Frakes himself, just sort of breeze over it. So I, I, I don't know that anybody takes me seriously over at CBS or at Star Trek, but hey, if they need someone to go and, and, and start uh, moving things forward, I'm their guy. Full of creative ideas. It's going to be all like long-haired guys on Star Trek with, uh, you know, it'll be the new Star Trek uh, Starfleet regulation haircut will be long-haired dudes. <laughs> yeah, probably. And the way, it, the way it might go is like people, Star Trek people turn or something like that. We, well, exactly. So, yeah. rock and roll Star Trek. I have a question for you. We need yes. some content. Any ideas? The content? Um, uh, that's a good question. I'll think about that. Have you guys. Another. Well, you're, playing, you're playing a lot of hockey. Yes, that's yes. I, yes. Got a, I got a gift. I got a gift from my dad. So. Oh, what'd you get? What'd you get? These little plastic magnet thingies that cling to the net and you gotta shoot them off. It's pretty fun. Cool. That's awesome. And every time I just expect them to break and they don't. That's amazing. Wow. I want to I play with those. I don't have any. I haven't been on skates in, in years. Ever since I moved to the States, I, I haven't been skating. But now mm -hmm. I live in the desert where there's actually a great deal of people who are very into hockey all of a sudden. Yeah, so but... What is the origin of Dammitware? Dammitware? Well, um, the name Todd Dammit rhymes with a, with a bad phrase that you shouldn't be saying. <laughs> so it's an old nickname that people used to call me Toddzilla or Todd Dammit. And uh, I just started wearing a t-shirt. A friend of mine, Doc Ellis from Original Sin, gave me a t-shirt that just said Dammit for my birthday one time. And I wore it. Um, all the time, and I wore it on this DVD that we made with Slash back in 2011. And people started asking where they can get this Damn It T-shirt, and I was said, "Well, I'm the only. It's the only. There's only one T-shirt. I'm the only one. I'm currently wearing a Damn It uh, hoodie, but it's on the back. Um, but mm -hmm. it's uh, so. So we started making Damn It T-shirts just because people were asking. And the next thing I know, it's there's hoodies. And, Another company called Asian Royale uh, makes Dammit shirts, and Dammit Wear is its own company. So yeah, we you know it's just something fun that we do. People uh, wear it over the world. The first time I went to Australia and the first time I went to New Zealand, there were people already wearing Dammit shirts. So that's so crazy. Are they available in our sizes? In your sizes? Uh, I'm an adult question. small. I don't think yeah, I don't, you'll, pro you'll probably get in trouble. I, I have friends that have uh, had their kids get in trouble for wearing them in school. Ooh. I didn't realize it was such an inflammatory phrase, but there you go. Do we have <laughs> school? Uh, no. <laughs> well, not currently now. No, I guess you could wear them out of school. But yeah, they uh, they probably make them. I mean, probably make them in small. Uh, it would probably would be more a case of like how small you guys are. Of course, you grow out of it in a year. Oh, I, <laughs> I have two things to say. Go for it. Uh, can you send us the link so we can put it on the YouTube tri archive? And if it does happen, it might not, like, if we finally get monetized, it will, it will get demonetized, probably. Well, mm -hmm. all right, all right. No, but people yeah, can go to the link and buy it online, man. Yeah, any video games, like, you there recently you play. I'll send you the link as soon as we're, uh, uh, I guess I could probably try and do that now. That sounds entirely too uh, it's fine. technologically advanced. Yeah. Later, later, later. Later. Any later video later. games you've been playing recently? The video games? I don't play video games. Isn't it weird? Hmm. I've never been a video game guy. My whole life, I never played really played video games. I actually... I, play, I have a pinball machine in my house. You guys know what pinball is, right? Yes. I do. Yeah. I have a Kiss pinball machine, a 1978 Kiss Woo! pinball machine. 
in my house. That is awesome. Uh, but I don't play a lot of video games. I've never really been much of a video. My bro- both of my brothers were obsessed with well every possible video game, and I never really played. I never really kind of got into it. I'm kind of glad I didn't because I waste enough time on television uh, that I, I don't need another habit. How so did you go. get the Kiss Pinball Machine? Um, I just saw it on Craigslist one day here in Vegas, <laughs> and I went over to the guy's house and bought it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a funny thing because when I was a kid, when I was your age, I would go to the arcade. And they would have that very pinball machine there. It was, you know, it was oh, a yeah. 1978 Kiss pinball machine. I went, so. I went to Ballers one time in here in Regina uh, about uh, three months ago, and I actually played on a Kiss pinball machine. I don't know. No, it was an Iron Maiden pinball machine. There is an Iron Maiden. There's a newer Kiss machine that they make newer uh, pinball machines. And like. I also played on an ACDC one. Yeah. The Kiss yeah. one from the one seven. The one he has is classic. So yeah. it's the yeah. OG. There is a newer Kiss one that's yeah. really fancy, but I I always wanted the one from when I was a kid. So now I have. I'm touching my face a lot. I get in trouble. Probably. Um. It's oh. just down to one now. Now it's all on you. It's down to the one person. <laughs> No pressure. I'm gonna go back a long, long time in this video and okay. ask you one thing. Uh, I I have an idea, but I haven't even told it to my dad. Okay. I know that they the Vegas Golden Knights are really new. I think they should get a alternate jun- jersey really soon, like. They've had enough rad. popularity. I'm surprised they don't have an alternate jersey. That's actually funny that you say that. Because I remember asking not that long ago, like, when are they going to have an alternate jersey? Because yeah. we all have uh, the existing jersey, which mine is hanging up there somewhere. I've got to find it. I but actually I have it over there. I Do you? know where it is. There um, you go. I, but the alternate, I haven't seen an alternate yet. I know that there's alternate t shirts with the. Uh, a star type thing i can't remember yes uh, that's on the yeah. shoulder of it on the so, shoulder yeah yeah it's star and short and source yeah that that, it was a very that's a very good logo idea it is i think so too yeah that would be a cool yeah that's uh that's 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 very very uh, serious hockey talk there when we start talking about yeah. alternate jerseys like i number. i actually i've been uh spending a couple i when i was in school on my breaks, I would actually like take a break and start sketching like ideas for it. I like this idea. I like this. You probably got a future in making uh, in making logos or something. Something like that. I'm not good at making logos or something. Well, there you go. You you you, you got time. <laughs> and he's bad. And I gotta go <laughs> do something. Okay. I, <laughs> I like that you guys could take uh, you could take turns. That's good. Have you learned any new instruments? I've learned the saxophone. You have? That's impressive. I've never tried any wind instruments. Uh, no, I, I, I was noodling around with the mandolin, and I kind of have, need to get back to that, because I got one for Father's Day a few years ago, and I ended up recording it on a few things and used it live a few times. But I have not uh, tried anything new in a long time. Guitar, bass, mandolin, ukulele, some keyboards, some drums. I actually want to start playing drums a lot more, but right. it's oh. very loud in that. Is the banjo lin like book schwa? No, has you tried the banjo lin? Have you tried the banjo lin like book walker? The banjo lin like butch walker? No, I've not tried the banjo lin. There's actually what they call a. Sorry, no Vegas fans allowed. I got my jersey finally. <laughs> no Vegas fans allowed. I found it. It's, it's the Saskatchewan Las Vegas Knights. Everybody knows that. Saskatchewan Vegas Knights. I heard. I found my jersey. There you go. I it got doesn't have on. anything on the back though. Wait, no, really? mine doesn't it doesn't have. Bye bye. Hey, it's in my head. Here's mine. Here's mine. <laughs> Good job. Mine doesn't have anything on the back. Someone had a question. 
Um, I'm gonna go check that question. It's right there. Like I put it up on the someone screen. watching wants to know if you have some vocal tips. Vocal tips? Um, you know that's a funny one because I, I really I'm not trained uh, as a singer, but I have been doing it for so long that I've kind of you know figured out this and that for myself. Um, a lot of it is um, I think you just gotta kind of figure out what's comfortable for you and sing what feels good and feels comfortable to you and and basically just take care of yourself all the standard standard things about taking care of yourself when it comes to you know hydrating and yeah. uh, uh, not talking too much i have a real problem because i talk a lot i sort of spend, spend the whole day talking and then walk on stage going like oh man you know it's like what happened i'm like oh right i was talking all day um so there's a lot of that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in, like, when you listen to guys like, say, Tom Petty or somebody like that. Tom Petty doesn't sing like ACDC, and the guy from ACDC doesn't sing like Tom Petty. So it's kind of like figure out what you're good at, figure out what you like to do, and, 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 and then make that work for you. It doesn't mean you can't keep pushing yourself and doing, uh, you know, learning new things along the way. I'm a better singer today than I was when I was in my 20s. So so I think it's just the case to just keep going and keep going and keep going, you know what I mean? And you, just, you learn all the time. Take care of yourself. Don't smoke. Don't drink. I mean, I say that, and there's a lot of people who smoke and drink who sing just fine. So I don't know. I, I don't do those things because they don't work for me. <laughs> yeah. But don't smoke and don't drink anyway. <laughs> yeah, we actually you shouldn't smoke, smoke or drink at all. And Good. Well, you I shouldn't. Don't. You're too damn young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're young, don't do it. No, no, no. Exactly. There you go. Are that you going works. to bring the mandolin to Rock Vault? To Rock Vault? No, I actually, oddly enough, only really sing in the Rock Vault. I play acoustic guitar, um, but it's mostly, I'm mostly a, a singer in that show, uh, which is a lot of fun. It's one of those things that I kind of, uh... <laughs> my daughter's watching this. Can you believe it? Ripley Freedom just says, Dad, you got new kids. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, you I'm already not, have a dad and mom. I a, yeah, they've already got a mom. Yeah, they don't need me. I I'm, remember. More like, I'm more like a, 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 a... They've adopted me now. That's how this works. Uh, Uncle Todd. But in the rock vault, I kind of came in as a, as a singer. They kind of... Uh, uh, it, it's a great show here in Vegas, which, of course, is on, is on hiatus like everything else. Uh, but, yeah, so I just show up, sing, have a blast. Get to sing Led Zeppelin songs and be purple and and then go home. Yeah. <laughs> now my daughter's laughing. I heard you guys were talking about getting new instruments and oh, I yeah. got I had the trumpet, but I switched to euphonium. So Big switch, just, big switch. Yeah, this I was playing too low for the trumpet. Are you better? A bet are you a better singer, bro? Because they say your voice gets better with your age. Um well I feel like I'm getting better. Uh just, you know, the 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 more I've been doing it, the more experienced I get. Um but that said, I mean, like anything else, the older you get, a lot of older people have, you know, a harder time singing what they sang when they were younger. Um I haven't noticed that for myself, but again I you know, who knows? Um, when I, you know, I'm 65, 70 years old, it's, I'm sure a lot of things are challenging, so who knows? We'll see. I'll let you know when I get there. But for now, I, I, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> How old were you when you yeah. started singing? How old was I when I started singing? Yeah. Um, I would have been... I was 11 years old when I started playing guitar. I, I got a guitar when I was about 11. And uh, I didn't really make a whole lot of advancements in it. It was just mostly kind of playing around with our friends and making racket. Uh, but I started playing and, you know, we put a band together pretty quickly, me and my friends, you know, 12, 13 years old. And it was just noisy as all get out. Um, and then, uh, so, you know, around then, but I really didn't take it very seriously until much, much later. In fact, I kind of joined bands when I, when I was about 14, I started playing in a kind of more serious band that would play high school dances, but I was just the bass player at that time, singing backups and whatnot. And then eventually I'd sing a song or two and a song or two more. And eventually I became the lead singer of, of a three piece version we put together. And that was 
16, 17, 15, I don't know, something like that. So this, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but this person called, I forget what their Sonnen. name is. Sonnenberg Steven or something like that. They're the FOH engineer for Rock Vault. They were watching. Yes, that's Steve Sonnenberg. He's the front of house is what FOH stands for. He's like the sound guy. So basically you see that guy, when you're watching a band, way back uh, in front of the stage, you'll find a guy sitting behind a giant board and he's mixing the sound. Everything that's coming out of the speakers, that's his job. Steve yeah. happens to be a very talented guy who uh, does the rock vault and a bunch of other crazy things around here. And he's a wonderful man. Has t Have you any ever done any modeling? <laughs> Only for my wife. <laughs> it's funny because, uh, you know, kind of like there would be like rock shops that would have us wear you know, their clothes and take pictures of it, but nothing really like as a professional model. Like I, I never sort of like, you know, you know, sporting a watch or something like that. You know, like, hey, um, no, that, that never came up in my uh, career choices. If anything, the only things that came up in my career choices were playing rock and roll. Do you have any stories you can tell us like recently or any funny stories? Cause I would love any Funny stories? Give me some direction. What do you want to hear about? Anything. Funniest thing that ever happened Literally, on stage. Funniest thing that ever happened on I, stage. I split, my, I split my pants many times on stage. What? Which is always funny. You tear, that, you're up on, stage, up on stage doing your thing and all of a sudden, whoops. And you tear your pants and you're like, oh, great. Now my underwear are hanging out. I look like a jackass. <laughs> so I learned to take a jacket or shirt off or a jacket and tie it around my waist to kind of hide the fact that I've got torn pants on. So I've finished many, many sets with torn pants. I've fallen on stage and so many times I can't even count. Tripping over monitors, tripping over cables. Ah, Same thing out. happens in interviewing. You huh. think you're going to do something and you fall over something like that. Uh, how, do you, oh, the the next question. how do you avoid t fatigue on stage? Fatigue? Oh, I don't know. I suppose it's like everything else. I, it's a lot more athletic than people give it. Oh. If it uh, oh. Are you okay? <laughs> it's a lot more athletic than people, at least in my case. I, I find that, you know, running around like a fool eventually would catch up with you. you got to kind of pace yourself. I'm not an athlete, so, but sometimes you get on stage and you're so excited to run around and you're like, whoa, I probably should have, uh, probably should have, uh, you know, stretched and rested and did a bunch of like, you know, exercises, but, uh, I, you know, it's like anything else. I think that you got to kind of be in, you've got to be in, in good shape and take care of yourself. And, uh, so I should probably follow my own advice and do that. Do you have any funny slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the conspirator stories? Um, uh, well, many funny stories. I can't quite think of any off the top of my head because all the times that I've fallen on stage was about many times with Slash Feature, Miles Kennedy, and the Conspirators. But we have a really good time together, all of us. We have laughs all the time. You know who has the most laughs? Frank Sidoris and I, the guitar player and I, are very silly individuals who spend all of our time making fun of things and laughing and having a good time. And Brent and Miles and Slash are infinitely more quiet than he and I. So they have to put up with us being loud and annoying all the time. But, you know, most people in my life have to put up with me being uh, loud and annoying. But most of us have a good time. Any <laughs> twin fight. Twin fight. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, stop it, Tom. Yeah. Actually, no I'm going to hop back to the other question about being on fatigue on stage. I bet you... Playing on stage is like running an 800. You have it's to... Like what? Running an 800. You have to keep your pace. Any it, uh, any authors you would recommend for people? Authors? Like writers? Yeah. Oh, gosh. So, I've been reading yeah. this... Uh, well, it's probably That's a bit adult. People. Not really... Not like adult adult. But I've been reading Ronan Farrow's book recently. Um... There's a number of different authors, all of which are jumbled up in my head. What I have been reading a lot, and I always read almost every single rock and roll biography that ever comes out. I always, because I'm such a big music fan, 
the new Elton John book or Flea has a book. All these rock and roll musician books come out and everybody knows that I love to read and they all know that I love rock and roll. So I always end up getting those for my, for my birthday and for Christmas. So those tend to be the things that I, that I gravitate towards. But recently I've been reading Ronan Farrow's book. It's called uh, Catch and Kill. And it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a journalism book. It's, it's, a, it's very kind of heavy. <laughs> it's a bit heavy, but uh, and, I recommend And what if so, thing happens to me in chapters, I see a hockey book and I'm just like, ooh, let me read this. And I don't get sure. it. Sure, if you're interested in something, you always kind of gravitate towards reading about those. But I find that, you know, if you're in, I only wish school, if school was always about rock and roll and science fiction, I would have had straight A's all the time. But there was very little rock and roll, very little science fiction, very little comic books, and very little horror movie stuff in school. In fact, zero of all of those things. But uh, I get an A plus in all of that. Uh, I grade myself as, as an A+. Plus. What are the guys from Toop doing on Hiatus? We get together We get together once in a while on, on the phone or computer like this, and we've been kind of trying to go over some ideas for the next Toop record, uh, CD, waveform, whatever the heck we decide to do. <laughs> um, so we're trying to write more songs because we... Uh, I don't know, you guys know pretty well that Tuke has sort of started this recording a lot of old Canadian classic songs. Yeah. And then, yeah. then we wrote a song called Never Enough For You. And then we, now we want to do more of that. We want to kind of, you know, yeah. make the next one. We, we're not quite sure. I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards part old cover songs like Triumph. Someone just wrote here doing a Triumph song. Oh, they're they're doing a tri triumph documentary, so like, yeah, that sounds exciting actually. Uh, but we have not recorded a triumph song, but doing some some cover songs and then some like original songs. So maybe like a half and half. We'll see. I mean, that's the weird thing is you guys know better than me. It's like making records in twenty twenty is kind of I don't know. I don't even know if that's really going to be a thing five and years from now. Considering that, cool. considering that there's not much covers anymore. Um, it's kind of now kind of unique now that there's well, not yeah. much covers anymore. We'll never run out of things to cover because we sure love our old Canadian music. But, um, yeah, we, we definitely have the idea of recording, uh, uh, focusing a lot more on coming up with our own songs. So, and, you know, it, it's a lot of fun doing that. It's, it's really challenging and really fun. And, and, uh, it's kind of what, uh, it's kind of what we should do, I think. So. That's kind of what we're doing. Can you sing higher than Miles Kennedy? <laughs> I don't know. That guy can sing pretty high. But what's really funny is is I have to sing these harmonies in the studio, and it'll often be like, okay, now sing this above Miles. And I go, I got to sing above Miles? You know, he's like one of the highest voices out there. So a lot of the time, I do end up singing uh, some higher than Miles. But I think Miles is, is not as crazy as me when it comes to like being able to kind of pace himself and save his voice. Miles is one of the best singers in the whole wide world, so being able to sing along with him is, is, uh, is challenging, and it's not easy. So, what is, is what is Doctor Alibi? We're getting uh, some questions about it, and it Do being your best performance. Doctor Alibi is a song from Slash's solo album ten years ago, two thousand and ten. So he put out a solo album in two thousand and ten. He had a bunch of different vocalists on it. He had. Uh, Lemmy was one of them, and he, Lemmy's song was called Dr. Alibi, but he had Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, Kid Rock, Miles Kennedy, that's where that all happened, uh, Fergie from Black Eyed Peas, the list goes on and on and on. And the song Dr. Alibi, it was originally done by Lemmy from a band called Motorhead, I don't know how familiar you are, guys, you guys are with that, but he was a, a good friend of ours who has since passed, but... Um, so now when we play shows, I get to sing the song Dr. Alibi, and it's an honor. It's a true honor, and people the fact that people ask about it uh, makes me uh, pretty proud to be able to get up there and sing that song. Ozzy Osbourne was on it. Thank you uh, for pointing that out. Yeah. In that was pre a In pre-K and kindergarten, I got a Motorhead shirt annually. 
What? Yeah, wow. from this one shop. I still remember the shop. I think it's in wow. downtown. It is in downtown. And it has, it's like all over yellow. The classic, the vintage, vintage vinyl. The vintage, yeah, vintage vinyl. Ah, oh, rad. I, I, I was wearing my Motorhead uh, hoodie yesterday. Oh, nice. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Motorhead. Unfortunately, they, uh, you know, they're not together anymore. Yeah. But still, like all great bands, every band has to split up. So like Nirvana, the sad thing that happened. It is very sad, isn't it? It's the yeah. worst. But uh, like I say, at least we have the music. You can always go listen to uh, all your favorite bands any any time you want to. Yeah, I literally just finished a book of what was rock and roll this morning. There you go. It was awesome. I like. Perfect. We asked during our other conversations, but someone asked Marvel or DC. Oh boy, that's a loaded question. I am, uh, since my youth, I've always been a DC guy, but I have to admit that, well, I've always loved both, but uh, I always have slightly leaned more DC, only because I'm a classic rock guy and I'm a classic comic book guy. So things like Superman and Batman have always resonated with me. They've been around since 1939, gentlemen. 1939, I think 1938 was Superman. So there's elements of that kind of stuff that really I, I really love. But obviously the MCU, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is just you know amazing and possibly, yeah, I, I can't get enough of that stuff. I, I'm a big sucker for that stuff. So yeah, it's a slight lean. It's the same thing with Star Trek and Star Wars. It's a slight lean to Star Trek. It's a slight lean to DC. And to be honest, those two those two choices are probably the least popular of either of those categories. That makes me so punk rock. When what it comes you, to sci-fi books. <laughs> what do you think of Nixie, Nick, Mr. Dot Brown Stone 99 said, what do you think of Nikki Six her her Heroin Diaries and Nikki in person. Bang. Nikki has always been Nikki's always been really awesome to me. We were very fortunate. I met Nikki, this is a crazy story, but I, I met Motley Crue when they were recording the record with John Karabi in Vancouver, Canada. Um, I was working with Bob Rock and Age Electric, and I came down to the studio to grab my stuff, and he had just started recording with Motley Crue. And it was Nikki Six, Mick Mars, Tommy Lee, and John Karabi. And so I only like shook their hands and said, hello, I grabbed my stuff and I'm leaving. And then years later, seeing Nikki, we, we played some shows with Molly Crew, and they're really good to us. You know, they're really, really, really good to us. And, you know, when you play with Slash, you get a lot of respect from some pretty cool people. So Nikki's always been really great to me. We talked about our kids. That's how normal of a conversation I had with Nikki Six. The, the decadent, dangerous rock stars sitting around talking about our kids. <laughs> Next time you see Nikki, ask him about the photos he took at the skate park in Esteban. He was shooting photos of a skateboarder with no legs. That sounds interesting. And wow, that's great. You know, I was born in Esteban. Oh, cool. So we have merch that's only $20. If you want a shirt, we actually have it in your size. I think he got a shirt when he was here. We gave him shirts. Oh, I got we, he's got a shirt. I All I donations go to COVID nineteen. Finishing each other's sections. So we Only have twenty dollars. Thank you for joining us today. Well, we have to wrap it up. So see you all. See you, Todd. Um, see thank you everybody guys. for watching. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you. Surprisingly, there's a lot of people in Brazil and Italy. That's we that's hope the people best. in Italy are safe. We hope everybody is safe. Farewell, everybody. Wait, wait, I feel that way. Victory! Later, gentlemen. Victory! Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye! <laughs>